Times don't fly too high. Be sure to keep the ground in sight. Fly forever if you keep it tight. Love the world, but keep the sky. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome into Flying with Mike. Uh, glad to have you here. We're on our next flight, uh, YouTube. I know you're going, oh, next flight? What? Yeah, uh, we've been setting it up a little bit with our crew over at Twitch. Uh, we kind of kill the records. So we have one video of our flight from Lyon to Gatwick, and then we'll restart like we just did. For the second flight, that way you get them in a little smaller chunks instead of this one big, possibly five, six hour video. So, uh, unfortunately, Twitch has to endure all of it. So, no, they actually enjoy it, I found. Uh, I get more, the views seem to go up the longer I stay on. So, but anyway, we're sitting in Los Angeles, LAX to be specific, MD-11 from Rotate the Passenger version. And uh, wow, a little surprise to me, even though I knew of this um, new um, addition, if you will, to uh, X-Plane 12, I wasn't sure how we'd see it. And lo and behold, uh, boom, here it is. Um, X-Plane in one of the 1. Uh, or yeah, 1.2 betas we went through um, implemented where, now they said two jetways would move. I haven't seen that yet, but we're in gate 33, I believe it is here in LAX. And um, when we went to uh, hook up the jetway, it went to door 2L, the, the midship door, uh, meaning like most heavier aircraft, if they had the two doors, they would load there. Your first class could peel off and the rest go the other way. Um, I... Now I've got to see it for the first time. And I thought I'd been at airports that had this, but then I realized it was X-Plane 11. Duh. <laughs> so, but anyway, welcome in. We're flying from Los Angeles to Salt Lake City, the MD-11 Rotate Passenger version. <laughs> and I got the hiccups again. Go figure that. 
All right, and we are going to try to do this on VATSIM. Um, we'll see how things work out. Uh, instead of like the last flight where we stayed off, um, we're going to try and fly on VATSIM um, with what comes up. Um, also, we need that program. Hang on, I just realized I don't have all my normal programs up and running. So stand by. Sim Toolkit should be showing, coming alive. There it is. And I think that'll be it. All right, so we got Sim Toolkit up and running. Let me do one other thing behind those curtains. Don't mind them curtains, folks. Uh, you got to watch The Wizard of Oz to get the whole flavor. Because I'm not good at it. <laughs> All right. Ay, ay, ay. What is our tail number? Is it in here? Maybe. It is not. So we'll zoom in 807 DE. I think I loaded that in this. And it's Elevate Tech. I'm a beta tester, so I try to 807. Yep, yeah, there it is. So I try to load it in uh, just to be um, seeing what they're coming up with and if there's anything I could suggest. Um, I got a really good program. I will tell you that right now, folks. So there's another look at it. Beautiful plane, Delta. That is the best. I'm sorry. Sorry to Delta management. This was your best livery ever. And uh, would love to see it come back. That's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> and I need to do one other thing that we did not get set up. And that is... You know what? I am going to go ahead... see what they have here All right, sorry for my quietness. I've got to set a flight up here real quick. Ah, takes so long. Sorry, folks. Okay, it's in there now. Sorry for that. I got it right this time. If the other one doesn't go through, I get it. I screwed up. I forgot that was a heavy, uh, not an Airbus or a 7-3. I understand my gaff. All right. 
Let's get to work here. Let's bring Sim Toolkit in, do a quick pre-brief. Um, still running pretty good on the schedule I am trying to keep. Okay, so you can see the uh, traffic here. Uh, the route is right here, just came up for you. Orca 5 to Las Vegas to the Q70 to Blip to Q842. Winning uh, MLF to the Quinn 5 arrival into Salt Lake and looks like northerly operations in play. Looks like. We'll see once we get going if things change. All right, and I do have this up. Okay, Los Angeles Real World ATC is saying, uh, hang on, do we have departures? We have them somewhere in here. We are departing two four left, two five right, and uh, so that's good for there. Um, up in uh, Salt Lake, arrivals. 3-4 left, 3-4 right, 3-5. Cool. Northerly ops. All right. I just had to check. All right. So let's do it. Uh, 319 people going to try to board on here. I do not know the max. 60,610 pounds of payload. Uh, 36,530 pounds of fuel. And uh, we're going to go with a cost index of 80 at flight level 390. Weather in Los Angeles, west wind at 15, 10 miles visibility. We're going to have a few clouds to punch through uh, as we head out on the Orca 5 uh, of 1,000 and 2,700. Once we're through that, I think we're okay. And up in Salt Lake, the winds are 320 northwesterly at uh, 19 gusting to 29 uh, definitely need to strap in that hairdo uh, 10 miles visibility and a few clouds uh, to pester us at 2300 more importantly an overcast layer at 3700 feet so that's our ceiling however high enough that we shouldn't have to think about higher levels of ILS or instrument approaches Temperature, by the way, is 43 degrees up there in Salt Lake, up in the high country. Uh, peak winds at 1748 Zulu. That wasn't too long ago, folks. Uh, 29 uh, knots, 330 uh, degrees. I'm going to go ahead and file... Um, this time on VATSIM, ah, they're making me log in. Yes. Okay, whatever. Yeah, we had uh, nothing major, but yesterday uh, we have an issue uh, that arose with... Um, Frankfurt approach and uh, who knows if it'll be what'll come of it so basically there if you have a radio by the way I didn't even think to look down here okay this one's fine but if you only have two digits after the decimal uh, you could be in trouble with uh, some of these of uh, ARTCs now so while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and flip that on. And do that. Yeah, because they, uh, they're they not listening nor transmitting nor giving a crap about those channels. So just so you know, GA guys, be ready. Old historic aircraft, be ready for that garbage that's going on out there in Europe. So uh, just to be forewarned. All right, I believe we filed it. If not, let's just double check. And we are Delta 572 Heavy. All right, let's get rid of Sim Toolkit. Let's get this plane loaded. All right, 
first thing I do when I come in, uh, y'all didn't get to see it, I uh, click the power button right at the bottom of the EFB here, then come up here where you see it highlighted, parked with external power. Click it. All you're skipping, folks, is turning the batteries on. Oh, and then going to the EFB and selecting ground power. A lot of steps. All right, we'll come to weight and balance in a minute. Afterwards, I come to this page, ground ops. Uh, now you can do this either here in the EFB, you get more options, obviously chart apps and all of this, or you can do it from rotate MD11. I just choose here because it's a lot easier. Uh, and then bring my jetway over if there is one if there isn't request stairs and then open the cockpit door it's actually door 1l 2l 3l 4l 1r 2r oh wait 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 do they have those yeah and then one two three four r's pretty simple system folks but yeah i know <laughs> And we'll get our cargo doors open now. At night, you can turn the lights on if you want. They'll actually light up. Uh, let's go high for the uh, cabin, though. And uh, that's all I do here for now. Then I'm usually going to come over here, set my map up uh, at about like level 9. And then I'm done. I don't have the rest of this available. Go to my weight and balance. And now this is where I kind of call it the rubber hits the road. Okay. Go back to your sim brief. If you use it, load your aircraft. 319 people. I don't think we can put that in here. Okay. I think I lied. Yeah. 285 is all we get. <laughs> Didn't think we got that many. <laughs> Um, however, we're at 54,000. Um, let's do this. I like to take my zero fuel weight currently on the plane. But first, what are we aiming for? 329,000. Really? Boy, I'd really love to know the weights. <laughs> Holy mackerel. We're heavy. Okay, that means we uh, back down some peoples. Not a lot of people going to travel with us today, it looks like. You know what? I am going to just set us at about 220. And we want an estimate of 340. Not going to worry about it. We'll get to the payload CG and these CGs here in a minute. Okay, let's get our block fuel in. Block fuel is 36530. Taxi fuel, I already know, is 2000. But if you want to know, this, I have Sim Brief attached to my Sim Toolkit. Kind of try to help me out a little bit with one stop here. So sim brief, view my flight. Okay, so here it is. There's our uh, estimated zero fuel weight, which we saw is way off. That is probably because this is way off. Problem is, we don't know what that is. Or if it is, I haven't found it in any documentation. Come down to briefing preview or yeah briefing preview and show the details show me the money love to see that uh, but anyway um, now down in here is your fuel this is your fuel information here's taxi 2000 here's um, uh, block fuel right here 36 530 Here's your in-route burn. We're going to need that 
okay, and I don't think we need our reserve. So we're going to need 17669. Keep that in your mind. That's our in route. 2000 was our taxi. Two thousand. Click enter. And seventeen. Whoop, not there. Here. One seven six six nine. Boom. All right. Reason being, as it says right there. Enter trip fuel to compute and check landing weight. 357. Since everything's heavy here, folks, guess what? It's heavy too. Now we get into that 30 to 31% takeoff CG Mac. So you see where it's highlighted for apply load? Come up, ZF, then TO. That number needs to be 31 or 30 to 31. Use your payload CG, begin to move it. And this could get very close to limits. So that's why things need to be more accurate in this plane so you can have better numbers. Now, what I do to help with another step down the road with the McDo, or FMC, <laughs> you know, this is an Airbus, folks. You just don't realize it yet. I click this. So it's applying the load and to the aircraft and applying the load figures to my FMC or McDo. Then I come back to ground ops, click fuel and food service. Boom. And we may actually, there's the fuel truck, I think. And we may actually see the few or food trucks come into play here. But anyway, we're going to move on because you all want to move on. All right, so let's get into the aircraft itself. All right, so we're on. Again, may I make one caveat? If you open a, a hatch on one of these switches, which we will do, hint, hint, close them. Why? Because if I left that open and say clicked from here and accidentally got here, I may turn the battery off. Takes two clicks. Same thing with this hydraulic pressure test. If you open it, close it. Just saves you that aggravation. And by the way, I don't think that does anything. <laughs> I just do it just because it's there. Um, <clears throat> engine APU test right up here bear with me a second it's also my sound check much better kind of annoying but then again, that's kind of what you want. Okay, electrical power is connected. I have quick moves here, so bear with me. Um, uh, we're on the ground power. Now you could fire up the APU. All you gotta do is click APU power or right above, click start stop. You wanna see it flashing, it stops flashing once it's up and running. We're going to keep going. Um, enunciator. Folks, this took me a long time to find. And boy, did, it, did I feel bad when I did. <clears throat> I even looked at pictures trying to figure out what are they showing. It's right here. So 
also go to your anti-ice windshield you'll see defog with the word off right below it cargo tower test right next to it look at that all of them light up and you can check by using your numlock saved windows if you don't you might want to read in how to do that but as soon as you let up they stop all right we already have the cockpit lighting as about as bright as it can go um for now uh if we get into some nighttime flying we may adjust apu just came alive if you didn't see the panel light up um and we can now come down to the apu bleed and click it to on it's like airbus it automatically turns on the apu generator that's why i kind of call this an airbus believe it or not if you understand the airbus basics folks uh, without the stick over here, you know, that we have fly-by-wire. Um, this airplane actually becomes a little simpler to understand. It's still a pig. It's still a pain in the rump to fly. But it becomes a little more understandable. Wait till we get to the FMC or FMS. Navigation system. One to ox at least mcdonald douglas knows how to count oh and that by the way was the cargo fire check do not know if it does that in the real life or not and ox okay let's arm the emergency power system and now the mcdo i mean fms Look at it very carefully, folks. Looks a lot like somebody by the name that starts with an A and ends in an Airbus. All right, so we click FMCs uh, and we just check uh, right now. Good for another couple days. And, um, and then we'll have an AirNAC update. Fun, fun, fun flight plan in it now um i've already got this loaded in bear with me k s l c oh dang damn it i would had i done it correctly Bear with me a second, folks. All right, let me get to X Plane 12 output. I'm sorry, um, aircraft rotate MD 11. Um, Go into my user data, saved routes, yikes. LAX, SLC, copy. Go into my rotate MD11, Papa. Whoop, not yet. And paste. Now it will be there. and click boom now i don't have an alternate route to logan sorry but uh now i can put that in though our alternate is lgu i don't even know what that airport is like now would be i guess a good time to find out Nine thousand foot runway yeah okay It'll work. I don't know if the airline, I guess the airlines would actually use it, but um, LGU, right? LGU. 
Now, all this section actually calls for is put your route in and do a pause, uh, check your IRS settings, and then go on. <clears throat> We're going to try it, see if it'll take it. Uh, usually it won't. Parking bays one. Is that the one I want? Uh, 30. One more look. 36. My bad. 36. Uh, 50. All right, 56. Point eight, one eighteen twenty four point five. Doesn't look like it's gonna take it. Oh, maybe it did. Um, and then I'll put my flight number in. Uh, D A L five seven two. And I'm pretty much done. Um, I could put my cost index and all of this in. I hold off because um, we're going to be back here in a moment. Uh, we got a couple of big things to check here real quick. Um, the hydraulic pressure test. I wonder if this grew out of the Sioux City uh, incident where the DC-10 lost it all, but there was, I mean, that was a, one of those one in a million incidents that happened. Um, I don't know. We're going to let it charge up here first. It's doing some other tests, but I'm just going to give it a couple seconds, let you see what it's doing. Uh, you're going to see it go through the one and the two here. The big thing we're looking for, according to the checklist, and the checklist, folks, is at um, MD11. Check. And that'll give you the checklist that runs concurrently with the um, tutorial. You can see it's running. All right, so now we're going to do the comms. This is where we have to pay attention. Oh, that's not comms, that is. All right, first off, we have 122.8. Check your, this is where you check your VAT SIM connection. Uh, so um, if you use um, X Pilot, great. If you don't, always make sure these things are in play. First off, two thousand next move that to expander to get the green light on mode c you'll hear them say you're not squawking mode c you're not squawking altitude same term different word next you will hear them with tx lit up okay but if the others are not you i mean they'll hear you you won't hear them unless RX is lit up. All you do is click on VH1, turn it up like I'm doing. Turn it all the way up. We have some of these controllers that are kind of quiet out there. We also have some who will blow your eardrums out. You can turn them down. Also, yesterday was the first time I actually heard someone cry out on 121.5, please contact me at such and such frequency. So, make sure you turn up VHF2. These are things we were warned about in an email. Uh, one thing that was not warned about is what I'm uh, talking with Fatsim about right now. So, uh, all right, now I am going to go ahead and connect. 
just so my spot doesn't get taken as easily. And to see if they're going to come up. They weren't up about 30 minutes ago. Up oh, tower came up. So, yep, they're up. All right. Uh, continuing on. So we got the comm radio set up. Now we got to do our um, comm, our, our PFDs. Basically, make sure you're in inches of mercury, which we are. That button is right here. LA traffic, minus 20, uh, 1531. Um, right, base turn, runway uh, 24 right. LA traffic. Well, we'll get our PDC squared away here real quick. Squawk 2002, okay. The one that was just on frequency, this is Alaska 135. Um, are, do, you, do you hear anybody else on the frequency or is it just me? Um. Alaska 135, are you calling Unicom? Unicom? Yeah, I've been using Unicom, but I'm seeing a bunch of traffic here, and I, I only heard me um, reporting my position and whatnot. Lima. Uh, 120 decimal nine or five. Oh. Okay. I guess that... Oh, I mean... Okay, never mind. Thank you. Yeah, he's been online for about five minutes, but uh, should be using that frequency anyway for CTF. But uh, yeah, 120 or five, he's online. Okay, so there, a right, little bit much. there of what's going on. All right, um, so I've got my uh, squawk now set, and I'm on X Bonder. Just looking it over, we cleared our route work of five, uh, three nine zero, and cleared departure transition climb with Sid, uh, except maintain five thousand for five minutes. We'll set all of that, and then. 39,000. Okay, yeah. Uh, frequencies are offline. 24 left, we will take. All right. Uh, that was our uh, PDC. Moving on, glare shield setup again. Um, weather here is uh, 2994. Make sure it's setting on the other side. Okay, good. All right. Um, minimums 200, good. Actually, it should be 400. Okay, and nav and heading are set. Bank angle. This is kind of tricky to find, folks. Um, it's this outer ring around your uh, heading, but you got to zoom in to see that little notch to know what you're set on. And auto is what's preferred. Now we do the final uh, setup on the FMC. Actually... Bear with me, I'm going to put that on config. Okay, so from here, now you would have put in your alternate, your flight number, your cruise is 390. Now, if you have any step climbs in there, put them in. According to somebody that flies Airbuses with this, that helps in computing some things that I didn't understand in his comment. But thank you for the reply. It just didn't make sense. We may not see what it's doing. It's basically what he's saying. Okay, uh, temperature and wind. Part of this we can get from Simbrief. That is our uh, um, uh, wind. 
currently plus would be a tailwind of 24. Temperature we have to kind of dig for. And that's what I'm doing right now. They really make this sometimes harder than it should be. Oh, here we go. Uh, no. Uh... All right, we're going to go minus five, seven, diagonal, tail. Two, four. Cruise index is 80. Okay, we're all set here. Go to the next page. Da -da -da -da. Okay, it's already filled in for you because if you remember, folks, let me just pull this out. If you remember, over here on weight and balance, we clicked apply load configuration to aircraft and FMC slash McDo. So it's already filled in for you. Press on to flight plan. Okay. We know we're going out on runway 24 left. Orca, Orca, Orca. Orca, good Lord. How long is it going to take to get to the Orca? There it is. <laughs> LAS transition. All right. Insert. Now, you can do like we do in all of our flights. Click plan up here and that'll put it to where you can track through with your um, uh, information here. Now I do want to bring in charts real quick. If you're not familiar with Orca this will help. Okay, you're not going to be able to see much here, but here is Orca. You're going to take off on the left side, uh, Del Rey, and then you're going to go on what's called vectors. Okay, at this point, we will not be with Tower. They may turn us loose on departure, on takeoff. Technically, a lot of places do that. But anyway... So we're going to fly out to Delray and be below 3,000, like it says. This is how Airbus McDonnell Douglas does a discontinuity. Now, we're going to come around so that we're above Clipper by 10,000 feet. So I am going to actually leave that in. We don't need to go doink, doink. And out. We need to let it do the to do this till we get to like five thousand, and then we'll start looping around so we can come over higher than ten thousand. We got high, you know, high mountains, folks. If you don't know, uh, off here to clear, and then we're on to Orca. So, just wanted you to see that uh, how it interacts here. centered all right now let's go through it uh it's real quick uh, orca clipper kegs it's gonna take a little bit coop orca navy blazing las looks good so far no discontinuities continuing on ife ify blip wyman mlf and now we're back to another discontinuity. Click SLC, click star. Oh, which one? Gwen. And we're 
we're gonna plan the ILS, I believe, for three four left. Um I think it is. Um Hang on a second, folks. Just trying to figure it out. Okay, I just wanted to see what kind of transitions we had. None, and uh, so we're going Quinn, uh, MLF on the Quinn 5, and at the end we'll dogleg over to the approach. Insert. Now, this will have a discontinuity. Okay. And I am going to get rid of it. Oh, crud. Uh... Okay. All right, so all I did is cleared it up so that from Plague, we go to Dunlap and straight in. And then we just keep checking it. Looks good. Our missed approach out to Stack Go is good. And then our run to Logan is good as well. All right, we're ready on the FMC plan-wise. And it's a good thing to do it here, folks, not in the air. It is very difficult. All right, next up on the check here, uh, we move on to what well, we've done the way, oh, we're on uh, takeoff and, oh, I know why. Okay, takeoff. I'm just gonna go to my sim brief for the flight, folks. Click takeoff performance at the top, two, four, left, calculate, and go with it. So we're going to go f uh, flex at 60. On. Um, slope here. I don't think there is one. Uh, no, no slope. Uh, U, zero, point, zero, diagonal, wind, component. So we have a headwind, 15. So again, HD, one, five. Outside air temperature reported 19. Now, 15 degrees flap, which I think it always does. And we'll check and confirm. 136, 136, 149, I'm good with. So we'll click, click, and click. 
and legs over, or I'm sorry, flight plan over here. Folks, that is it for the FMC. Very simple, very, very close to just like an Airbus. Last but not least is the center panel. Um, so we got our altitude set, which we're not going to worry. We're going straight to 39. Uh, runway heading is, I believe, 251. 251. Airspeed's good. And that's it, folks. And then a nav data. Now we set up our nav data screen. Traffic data. VOR. VOR. And we turn our weather radars off. Do the same on the other side. Weather radar off. Okay. And, folks, we're ready to get into engine start. How about that? Huh. That's about the fastest I think I've done this plane so far. All right, let's do it. Uh, first thing, of course, let's close up some doors. All right, and... Everything's parked over there. Let's see if anything's behind me. Perfect. We can hopefully put it right in there. Okay, let's do it. Um, now, APU is on. Okay, so we can actually disconnect from the ground, ground power, close our door. All right, and I'm going to try this. I <laughs> new to this part. Toggle. Look at that. Sweet. <laughs> I love it. I hope you all enjoy this plane. I mean, it's a fun plane to fly, just not one of my favorites. All right, engine start. Uh, parking brake on and uh, confirmed um, seat belts uh, beacon emergency lights to arm Doors, windows all closed. Air panel call for pushback. We will do that much. Um, and then we'll get on channel and get uh, going. 25 left for United 1395. Hey, Captain, let me know where you want this thing. Great news, Captain. Your toe's coming. Los Angeles Tower, Delta 572 Heavy, spot uh, 36 with weather, uh, ready to push and start with the uh, clearance he gave us, PDC. Delta 572 Heavy, Los Angeles Tower, uh, ADIS information, Delta is now current. Push the stars at your discretion, call for taxi. Pilot's discretion on the taxi, we have uh, Delta. Delta 572 Heavy. <laughs> 
That gets a little confusing. All right. Looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. Okay, with them connecting, we're going to go ahead, put her in auxiliary pump on, push back, air pumps on, transponder is at expander. We'll go A this time. And that sets you up, folks, up here. That'll put the packs off. Get the aircraft ready to, other than turn the beacon on, turn the auxiliary pumps on, and all of that. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toast connected. Bypass pens inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. All right. Stand by. I want to look outside the plane. Chocks. Okay. I want to, one more time. Okay, everything looks good now. That was stupid. Hang on. Here comes the pushback. Light them up. All right, there we go. Okay, engine number three, spooling up. Uh, 1395, welcome to LA. Exit right one able, to, uh, cross runway 25 right at Juliet, touch to the gate for your Bravo. Okay, right, exit right one able, uh, cross 25 right at Juliet and Bra Bravo to the gate for uh, 1395. Attention all aircraft information, Echo is now current, wind 250 altimeter 2993. Just about done here, go ahead and set your parking brake. And we're disconnecting the tow, give me just a moment. Okay, and that is how you get this going. Um, get down here for after start. We got one more engine to crank, and then we're ready to crank out of here, folks. Rotate it as we say out of here. And if you haven't seen an MD-11 do a takeoff or a DC-10, you don't know what you missed. That's about the one thing I really liked about the two planes, was that takeoff. All right, and... That's good. You know, I did it again. disconnected. Signal and pin on the left. Take it easy and have a safe flight. Yeah, thanks for the pushback. And uh, just so the audience knows, that is a free utility in X-Plane. All you got to do is download it, put it in your plugins folder. And you can do some amazing things that the uh, pushbacks do to get people to the right spots for pushback. All right, there's our pin. 
once we're fully spooled up, we'll be ready to go. And, uh, Sinkel2, welcome and thanks for the follow. We sure appreciate it. Uh, love having follows. And if you're over on YouTube watching this replay, hey, subscribe. We'd love for you to join the family we've been building there at uh, YouTube. Uh, thank you so much, though, uh, Sinceltu, Keltu. Uh, never good with pronunciation. Okay, engines are all spooled. All right, come up top here. Windshield, it's the only one that's lit up. <laughs> All right, um, anti-ice, we're not worried about APU. Engines are up and running, so we'll click it and see how that works. Air panel, APU's off. Uh, ooh, gotta turn the bleed off too. Let's try that again. Central Star, good afternoon. Spear wing 727, information echo. Hydraulic pumps are on. Spear wing 727, Los Angeles Tower. Hello, runway 25, all right, taxi via Bravo. Okay, it would just as we got what we needed. Uh, trim 4.9, set that in the uh, stave. Okay, while we're here, check our surfaces. Okay, uh, now we'll switch back to engine. And takeoff data is received, confirming uh, V speeds one more time. You'll do this at the runway again 136, 136, 149. And um, auto brake to off. I don't know how it got all the way over there. Stape trim set and uh, flight controls check spoilers. Little interesting animal. You see the small, well if you see a small arrow folks that moves it up and down the channel. The hand is what you do to lift it up. Flaps go to 15. Now we're gonna hold it slats. You gotta come down here to what's called dial a flap. <laughs> you got it, folks. It's going to go right in here. However, you set it right here. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like calling 1 800 dial a flap for all your uh, flap setting information. No, just kidding. So, flap 15. Verify we're going. There we go. And exterior lights, taxi, and logos. Taxi. All right, we're ready to go, folks. Los Angeles Tower, Delta 572 is ready to taxi for 24 left. Delta 572, heavy, runway 24 left. Taxi via Echo, altimeter 299. Echo uh, for 24 left, uh, Delta 572, heavy. Which one's Echo? I always get them screwed up over here. Out to the, uh, okay.
Okay, final checks here, folks. Weather radar. Azul, thanks uh, for. Los Angeles Tower Delta. Yep. I thought I had a call coming. Thanks for the uh, raid. Delta we sure appreciate you. Yeah, Delta 1029, we are on um, downwind 24 right, uh, setting up for the on off uh, Zulu 24 right, descending to uh, via the arrival. Delta 1029, call me when you're established. We're called Delta 1029. Delta 572 Heavy, caution, the departing traffic on the south parallels. RNAP Del Rey, runway 24 left, cleared for takeoff, wind 250 at 14. Uh, Delta 572 Heavy, cleared takeoff, uh, RNAV Del Rey, Delta 572 Heavy. Seven, leaving my airspace for sea change for Rootsia. Sea change approved, sparing 727, see ya. Air speeds alive, 80. Ah, thank you, sir. And uh, Delta 572, we're over to Unicom. You have a great day, sir. If only we could do a quick replay here, but we'd kick off that sim. Uh, oh, we must be on that, okay.
Okay, flaps are up. Uh, we'll get our spoilers down in the normal position. Again, look for the hand, not the arrows. We're holding 250. And I am going to go ahead and start turning us back. Alright, we're coming around that corner, headed for Clipper, or I may push us on to Kegs. Alright, we are now direct uh, kegs. I hope y'all enjoyed that. Uh, and we're getting uh, up there real quick. And I like that. <laughs> Alright, uh, great time out of LA, folks. Um, Azul! How does she fly? With wings? 
Thanks again for the uh, raid there, Azul. Uh, raiders, just so you know, we're flying with Mike here. We uh, uh, fly exclusively X-Plane. You will not find that other sim here. Uh, we um, are currently in the Rotate MD-11 passenger version. Came out, what, about a month now, folks? Something like that. Uh, we bought it pretty quick. Um, there are still some rotate things to, to work through with it. Keep with the 30 to 31%, those of you familiar with it, and uh, you'll do just fine with it. You'll understand it if you've flown it. If not, hey, the video is available. We'll be on YouTube uh, later tonight, tomorrow. <clears throat> so... We just uh, love having you all aboard, and uh, we are headed for Salt Lake City. A little bit of some weather, I think, up there, or at least some cloudiness. Um, hang on, I am going to take over. There we go. A little better. It should cross kegs and then turn on course. So we're looking real good, folks. Uh, speaking of looking real good time-wise, we're looking at about an hour to go. Uh, we're going to be climbing up to 39,000 and uh, probably hovering around Mach 0.84-ish. We'll see how that uh, translates out. But again, welcome in. Hope you had a great stream there, uh, Azul. And, uh, you know, there's a flight coming up with your name on it. Bet you can't guess which one. But the airline has your name. Maybe. I haven't decided if I'm going to install the livery or not. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, just thought I'd throw... Ooh! <laughs> Azul, yes. So, uh, just so you know, that's coming up um, here soon. Not today. Um, I'm wanting to say, like, Thursday. Can't be Thursday. I've kind of only can do one flight that day tomorrow tomorrow <laughs> so anyway we are planning that it's uh, number two flight so uh, uh, hope uh, hope to see you there or oh, hope you uh, have a great day as well if you can't uh, but yeah, folks, welcome into Flying with Mike. We try to fly anywhere from three to five hours a day, uh, sometimes six to eight, uh, depending how flights are. Um, and uh, we hope you come along, catch us as we're out here. Uh, as uh, Sin Kel 2, and uh, well, that's the only one that followed. Sorry, I thought there was another one, but it was Azul's Raid. Awesome! So, on we go to Salt Lake. And I think the tower went down. <laughs> I just happened to look up. I think either we went offline. Oh, nope. The tower did go down in Los Angeles. All right. Looking up towards Salt Lake. Uh, nice, clear run. <laughs> for two whoa two go arounds you know me I'm gonna try and pull out that landing no matter what I feel sorry for my passengers behind me you know I just don't get why airlines won't hire me I don't I don't get it <laughs> the Azul Hawaii curse <laughs> oh no 
Which airport, though? Well, were you going into Honolulu, or were you heading to the one that always gives me fits? Um, uh, well, the big island every now and then does, but uh, it's on Kauai, Kauai, or something. It's it's Peahog, and uh, that one gives me troubles all the time. But the big one does, because usually I end up on a day. Oh, Honolulu! Oh, wow. Uh, the big island, I end up on a day where the winds favor the cross runway. Usually, I can do it in the 130, sometimes in the C90, but man, anything outside of that? Oh, or now the fun one there is to do the RNAV uh, 9 or something like that, where you come around the mountains and in. Oh, yeah. But Honolulu's beautiful approach especially the fours, unless, of course, you choose to come in two twos. <laughs> then you get the same thing as I did in uh, uh, the Big Island. <laughs> really? All right, we're in cruise, by the way, folks. And I still have lights on. I want to be seen. All right, we'll be nice this flight. Let the people out. Two in it. Oh man! Dang! Oh, I I don't even want to tell you the number of wrecks I've had on there. Holy mackerel! <laughs> oh. I don't even want to talk about the number of, uh, we had several C-90 uh, King Airs up in Alaska in X-Plane 11, uh, the aircraft I like to affectionately call Fireball. Uh, the guy did a phenomenal mod on the default C-90. I think he just has the engines tweaked just a little harder than they should be. Because, boy, if you pop that red line, poof, your engines go into flames. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, of course, that's almost a guaranteed crash if you can't make it back. Which I couldn't make it back. <laughs> Couple of other aircraft, though, but, yeah, we, we've gotten a, a little better not much, a little bit of. We just don't like to do go arounds. No offense to ATC, especially with ATC on. So. <laughs> but to this flight today, folks, is on X or a uh, VAT sim. We are using a VAT or X pilot point. Got them both wrong. <laughs> and uh, headed to Salt Lake. Uh, warning, if you're out in the European area, first was a CRJ 200. Ugh. <laughs> There's a big wall in Atlanta. <laughs> At the end of the stream. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. Well, as we can all sit here and speak, we've had our little catastrophes everywhere. Some, because of the airport we're going into, for me, it's like um, I'm wanting to do some more streams down in the Caribbean especially Saba Island and uh, Bartholomew, St. Bart's, for those that don't know Bartholomew. <laughs> well, folks, those are some seriously challenging approaches. Uh, Saba being the smallest or shortest commercial landing strip. And St. Bart, well, you've all seen them. 
diving down for the runway. So uh, they're fun. X-Plane in this 1.2 that we're you know in right now was all about that and a few other things. And boy, did they really, wow. It took me nine attempts into St. Bart, uh, mostly go around. Uh, one crash, two crashes, take that back. Saba, oh my gosh, never crashed. Boy, did I come close every uh, for the first three or four times. That is one short runway, folks. Takeoff even scares me on that airport. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm thinking about getting that Islander and giving it a try. More of us um, stole aircraft. But yeah, there's some things to challenge him. Um, where were we? We just flew pretty challenging approach. Oh, over in Turkey yesterday. Uh, <laughs> that was that was a trip. <laughs> oh my gosh, that circle to land is mean. <laughs> So, but glad to have you all aboard. Glad to have you here. Always love going down memory road. But uh, we got, uh, we're coming over Daggett or very close to Barstow. And then on to Vegas, where we'll keep everything going on here in Vegas. Okay, looking up at the clock here, folks, we got about 50 to 55 minutes to go. Um, so enjoy. Let's take a look outside one more time. Look at that picture. Now I just want to see how Daggett looks below us. Never, well, I've been by it never in it um, when I drove a truck I went out to LA a couple times and uh, through Barstow down Cajon those of you that enjoy uh, the uh, train simulators that are out there uh, down Cajon so not a bad look out there folks from 39,000 feet And if the ads are too much for you folks, um, there is that subscribe button here in Twitch, uh, exclamation mark subscribe, but all you got to do is click the subscribe button and uh, go from there. It is pay, you do have to pay, uh, but you know what, it sometimes is not bad to be able to watch your, your favorite streamers without advertisements. Over on YouTube, unfortunately, I have not uh, gone all the way and monetized yet. Have the ability, I just have it. Um, Azul would be a great source for me to talk to. Uh, what I'm wanting to do, and I know Restream is what you use, but um, I want to, when I do monetize, go ahead and sign in, sign up for it. What the heck? <laughs> I love scenery. <laughs> um, be able to dual stream on both. Uh, plus, I have some other issues I got to work through on my own. So, uh, but yeah, we're uh, looking to uh, uh, go ahead and monetize here soon. Uh, whatever it is I have to do over there. I've got uh, the approved, the letter sent or emailed that I qualify and I just need to approve or, or say yes and 
then we'll be able to allow memberships over there. Trying to be a little more under, uh, more actually understanding what it means. Where when I became an affiliate with Twitch, I just bulldogged right in and I've been playing catch up ever since. No one gave me any mustard with that either. So I know probably just got a copyright strike. No. <laughs> Oh, anyway, folks, enjoy the flight. Uh, we're about 45 minutes to go, and uh, we'll be descending here shortly. And how shortly are we descending? How about about 280 miles? That's just doesn't seem right, but it always seems to calculate out right. I think I went too wide again. I'm looking at Sim Toolkit at my departure. Er, uh, oh well. We'll get it down one day. All right, so for the Quinn 5. Also, uh, for those not familiar, it's a 4,200 uh, feet up uh, runway. So pretty much high altitude operations. So ought to be fun. All right, we're getting towards Las Vegas. Vegas, baby. Then on to Salt Lake. So I hope you all have had a great Tuesday out there, folks. We are about 40, 45 minutes out of uh, Salt Lake and uh, should be a, be well, somewhat beautiful run. We got clouds, 3,700 ceiling when we departed. Uh, we'll check in here in a little bit, see how, how, if any, improvements have occurred.
short-lived with the airlines, the MD-11. However, they all got mothballed or whatever they did. The cargo companies got a fire sale and jumped on these aircraft. Now they have a touchy, something in the landing that made them very, I don't know, difficult customers, whatever, just did not like these planes. Uh, airline version, this version. However, the freighter, oh, they ate them up and f either figured out the quirkiness of the landings or dealt with it. Big packages usually don't complain. Uh, so uh, that is how the MD-11 legacy went. Few years in the airlines and then just an explosion in the freight world with them. Taking them, putting the cargo door on them, stripping them, making them freighters, and history was made with them. And uh, still is. FedEx and UPS are still flying them, albeit they are slowly retiring them. But it's a tough plane to retire. The heavy haul that it can do, combined with the range, they are just still loving this plane. So, also somebody said something about the range wasn't what they expected out of them with the shorter um, uh, uh, wings and not wings, but stabilizer in the back. I mean, it is short, but um, boy, they really airline wise ate them up or cargo-wise. So, folks, if you are on the fence on this plane, go ahead, pull the trigger, buy it very well done aircraft um, it's really not as hard as some people say it is to fly um, just keep one thing in mind if you think Airbus if you think Airbus you've got half the battle beat in this plane so much of this is very Airbus S um, and uh, you'll be shocked So, once I got over that hurdle, this piece of cake, I looked at it and went, this is an Airbus. And boom. So, I wish I could say that with the A350. It's an Airbus. It ain't working that easily. <laughs> There's a lot to that plane, though, that is so different than what we're used to in Airbuses and all. Although, albeit still kind of there, it just configured a little weird. But that's what's neat when you get newer technologies getting played into these planes. Now, the A330, oh my God, A, I'm sorry. Yeah, A330-900 Neo, oh my gosh. That airplane is a gem. We flew that earlier today, folks. Highly recommend. So, but the A350, not because of flight factor, it is just a challenge to me. And we're going to get over it. Uh, we just got to get it back in the air a little bit more. But we should be in Salt Lake here in about 35, 40 minutes. So enjoy. We're going to begin getting ready for the approach. Making sure nothing's flip-flopped on us. <laughs> that never happens out here. All right. Victor's in use in the real world. Uh, simultaneous approaches. Three, five, three, four, left and right. 
Uh, LDA DME runway 35, visual approach is also in use. Weather currently, according to the ATIS, which is 51 minutes old, uh, 310 at 19 gusts to 7. Ooh. Uh, a few clouds at 2,500, a broken layer at 3,600, broken at 5,000, 7 degrees Celsius. So, hey folks, it's getting into winter time out here. Um, as we cross over Vegas, onward and upward to uh, Salt Lake. So, I may kick on the anti-ice for the landing.
All right, folks, sorry about that. Had to stretch my legs. All right, let's uh, see what we got left here. Um, about 30 minutes, about 150 miles. Altitude error at 3-4 left. I don't know what that means. We're going to do that. Um, kind of come into the cabin here the easy way. And like I said, Rotate's actually done a pretty fair job. Uh, with the cabin three three and three um, I mean that's pretty much what they were uh, but problem is we need that number uh, 285 I need to put in here's the back uh, galley area and rear doors So, I mean, really well done aircraft. I was going to say, if it's where we are, man, something's wrong. A lot of water in an area that would not know what to do with itself with that much water. And here we are in business class, pushing into first. Another galley area. But uh, as far as circuit breakers and all of that you can throw, not really. Uh, but it is a well done cockpit. Um, and so forth. So just giving you a little flavor. Azul, ha, <laughs> you liked, huh? Yeah, it's a really nice plane. Um, I really like it and uh, not going to fly it as much as say the 330, 330, 900 Neo or the A350, but it's, it's going to get some mileage. I'm kind of waiting for someone, hint, hint, to come up with a World Airways livery for it. That's what I usually saw it in. Uh, aside from cargo, and nobody's made those cargo ones yet, Centurion or Tampa. What was the other one? It was another one. But anyway, uh, we saw those a lot. So, All right, we are closing in. We are 120, is that? Or is that 170? 120. All right. So let's get things readied. I'm going to keep the throttles up there for now. Got one tip from somebody. I'm going to try it out today, see how it works. Um, about pulling the throttles uh, in the descent. Uh, so the uh, EAD systems, uh, let's see. The EAD's clear. Config. Uh, everything looks good here. Uh, 
um, landing data. Now we're about 120 miles out. I think that's about good enough time. Um, okay. Uh, there's really nothing to do here um, other than verify speeds. So we're going to plan about 150, 146 for our approach, um, 35 land, and uh, plan the uh, touchdown at 141, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Uh, you love how I do that? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, so we know what we're going to do here. I thought we could put in our landing. I think maybe this way. Okay, so we can't put that in. No big deal. Um, but we are cruising along at a point eight, uh, eight three, and All right, let me bring charts in now. All right, so here's Salt Lake, folks. We're going to be landing on the left runway. Is that right? Yep, left runway. Uh, so... My guess is we'll probably be coming off right around A9, A8, okay? All right, the Quinn 5 arrival real quick from Milford to Delta, Unita, Fernsey. Expect 15,000 feet of Frenzy. 11,000 at uh, Quinn, 11,000 at uh, Camp. Then we'll begin our descent for the VO, for the runway. Over here is our ATIS, uh, real world. It is a D ATIS. Here's how you tell right up here. If it's that way and you're in a U.S. territory, so that's anything U.S. with D ATIS, Honolulu, Anchorage, and uh, San Juan you will get a real world um, ATIS. Everywhere else doesn't seem to work. So from page, we then transition as it says here, three, four left. So we'll transition over to Dunlop and in. Dunlop is 8,000 feet. And then we'll be on the ILS coming down through the clouds, bust out, and hopefully do some kind of justice on the landing. Uh, but you can see, obviously, a lot of high terrain here. One more big point here, folks. It's 4,200 feet in the air, so it's all high altitude. 10,000, 11,000 foot mountains to the uh, east, the lake to the west. Okay, frequencies we could find up here. Don't see anyone online as of yet up here. Uh, but our ILS frequencies, 111.9, final approach course. Flag uh, is our, our final approach fix, 6,100 feet MSL. Followed up by... Um, um, the uh, landing, obviously, but we'll be also 1,870 feet above the ground. 
Decision altitude and height 4,429 feet on the altimeter. Uh, 200 feet AGL. So we'll set that up here in a minute. And in case of a missed approach, we'll climb to 4,800 feet off on a left turn to 8,100 feet. Join the 249 radial off of Wasatch out to Stucco, which is 20 miles and hold. Okay, there you go. Putter, Camry, Dunlop, Flag, five and a half miles out, and we should be there. Now, mind you one thing. Metars are above ground level, not above sea level. Keep that always in mind. 140, so we should be about 700 feet a minute. And we have a full array of lights. There's our missed approach, and then here's our minimums. 200 and a half mile pretty standard category one or an RVR of 18. All right, we're coming up to Milford right now. Let's see how our top of descent is showing on the chart here. Nav display right after Beaver. May start down at Beaver, just so you know. First altitude we'll come down to is 15. All right, let's set our radar altimeter. Okay, we're all set, ready to come down. I hope y'all are ready for the arrival into Salt Lake. Okay, we are now on the Quinn 4 5 arrival. <laughs> Again, thanks uh, for being a part of Flying with Mike. It's always a pleasure, folks. One last look before top of descent. That is, in my opinion, the best Delta livery ever. It's a shame people have to just think, oh, we got to keep it up to date. That was Delta. Yeah, that would be good, but you know, I kind of wish Delta would go back to the old livery. Americans, all silver chrome, I was never a big fan of. Not fan of this one. I kind of like the uh, merger U.S. Airways American one. White over blue, little different tail. I like that one, but I uh, don't like American at all. Uh, shocked that uh, America West went with that livery when they bought U.S. Air to then buy Delta or uh, American. All right, I am going to set my numbers. 
we said 15. America West really had a great uh, scheme. I liked theirs. Uh, um, and when they merged that blue over or white over blue, oh, that was spectacular. Uh, this gray thing they got going on with American is so bleh. Almost want to stay off the plane. And Southwest, uh, I mean, their orange livery, I kind of liked of the old days. But um, I got used to the blue, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, but yeah, Delta, this is what Delta should be. And United needs to really think up something better than they've got as well. All right, we're going to start our descent. So we're going to go ahead, kill the music, pull the pull the lever, down we're going to go to 15,000 feet. All right, we'll see how this works out. All right, checklist time, checklist again. Uh, if you're looking for a checklist for this plane, this is the one I use. Uh, wait a minute, I spelt it wrong. There we go. And uh, it coincides with the um, um, training flight. Uh, that comes with the uh, rotate now granted it's still the training flight um, is still tailored to the freighter not the passenger when you get the passenger plane I wish they would have done something different but they didn't didn't ask me so that's why they did <laughs> but anyway um that's the checklist I at least use to go through step by step so I make sure it somewhat flies right. <laughs> All right, there's the cloud layers we got to go through. All right, Delta, we're about to go over. Then you, you, you enter, and then Frenzy. We're in the eye of the hurricane. Not the tiger, the eye of the hurricane. <laughs> oh, wait, we're over the... Oh, we're getting hit with a little flak. Oh, no. <laughs> Looks like a little UFO flying by. <laughs> I love some of these clouds.
see if we see any of that over here. Now, see, I would tell Laminar something's up with these clouds. They need to be changed. The next time I board a plane and fly, this will be what I fly through. And it was for not, because <laughs> that's what happened a couple of uh, years ago on a flight. The clouds were just really starting to really look good on VATS, but they just, just not on VATS, but on X-Plane. But... I thought there was a little over this or that, and lo and behold, we took a flight to Arizona and back. On the way back, the clouds looked just like or very close to what was out the window. Yeah. We didn't complain to explain. <laughs> now, my only problem with the weather right now these so-called cirrus clouds, I never see them. Unless they have a different interpretation, that's always possible. But the cirrus clouds, I know, I don't see. But by far, folks, from the beginning, what was it, two years ago of X-Plane 12 to today? The clouds are in just dynamite. And just wait, coming soon, not sure which update, the weather radars. Cannot wait for this. I don't know anything about how to operate airborne weather radars in airplanes, so I look forward to learning and I look forward to showing because the videos that are out there on my Discord, wow. All right, let's get the seatbelt sign on. Logo lights on, everything set. I really don't know what this is intended for. Um, I really don't, so. Anyway. They say something about it in the manual, but I don't see it in the airplane. All right, transition 21 minutes ago will be on an altimeter of 2980. Uh, currently broken at 6000, so it's going up a little bit. That's helping. I don't know what's up with this runway error. And we'll find out. Okay, 200 for minimums. We're at 15,000. Perfect. We're not supposed to slow, are we? We'll slow by Gwen.
Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and take over speed. At least slowest to 290. All right, and we're allowing the plane to slow. I'm going to go ahead and help it a little faster. Any ice. Okay, we'll start our descent. Once we get to 11,000, I'm going to slow us to 250. 240, actually. All right, folks, we are very close to the arrival into Salt Lake. Sorry for the quietness. Hope you all uh, are enjoying. Uh, currently approaching Gwen on the Gwen 5 for 3-4 left. Hope you all enjoy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, decrease, get this set to decrease as well. All right, we are slated. Dunlip, okay, so Dunlip again is eight thousand. Camp is eleven thousand. All right, and we're just easing on down to 240 knots. Uh, make sure all our lights are on. Not yet. Seven minutes. Flight attendants prepare for landing. All right, folks, we are just about there. I hope you all are ready. Put your predictions in, exclamation mark, the word predict to space. Make sure to use a negative number. Still 
2980 or yeah 2980 Virga south and west so we could be flying through that All right, off of here. It's 11,000 to camp, then we start down for eight. Okay, guess what? Lights are coming on. All right, we are close, folks. I hope you've uh, got a prediction in. We'll be sidestepping over to that ILS here shortly. Uh, NAVRAD real quick. Uh, 1-1-1-9. Uh, uh, 3-4-4, so we should be picking it up here soon.
Okay, I'm just waiting to see signs of the runway. I think I got it out here. Okay, runway is in sight. I just don't know if we're going to lose it again. Salt Lake City. One oh nine fifty. Salt Lake traffic, uh, Delta 572 heavy on the ILS 34, uh, full stop. Correction, 34 left, sorry. Salt Lake traffic, three mile final, Delta 572 heavy, three four left. Hey, we're going to call stable. We're going to be landing three, four left. Again, landing.
Welcome to Salt Lake. This is Salt Lake traffic, Delta 572, exiting 3-4 uh, left, Alpha 7 to the terminal. Salt Lake traffic, South West Metro 358, Southbound Final, South Triple Left. Okay, now finish up this uh, real quick here. Uh, after landing, uh, spoilers, did I get those? Nope, not yet. Uh, laps are up. Um, weather radars auto brake. Disarmed. Stape trim to three. Okay, now we're more focused here. Uh, so flaps and slats are up. Uh, weather radar is off. Auto brake, stape trim, exterior or lights are set, and uh, stape trim, anti ice, APU is on. Uh, we just need Delta is this set of concourses, if I remember right.
All right, APU's running. All right, we are shut down, folks. Welcome to Salt Lake. Wow. Fun, fun, always in this plane. All right, uh, glad you all were here. Glad you all enjoyed. And uh, uh, what a great trip this was. All right, so we're shut down. Brakes are set. All right, let's go ahead, head over here. Ground ops, throw the chocks under. Nice. Goes to the middle. Like that, folks. Like that. That's how it should. Uh, beacon. Off. And... Fuel switches, transponder, seatbelts, lights, doors may be opened. There it is, folks, the MD-11. Let's, uh, termination. Okay, we've done all of we need to. Oh, wait. It'll wait. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do, let's take a look here first at uh, what... <laughs> oh, boy. I did not start the ACARS program. So, hopefully the flight counted. <laughs> Good. Um, boy, that just cracks me up. All right, well, we didn't get any credit for that one. That's okay, though. Uh, folks, we're um, still enjoying a great flight. Hey, look, Southwest Taxi in behind us. Um, all right, Elevate Tech. They got us at 463 feet a minute, uh, which is fine. Um Come down a little. There we go. And the one we go by a lot, SIM, or no, not the end screen, but SIM toolkit, which is right below it. Oh, I hit that now more and more, and I move things around to stop that. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Uh, but anyway, 517 feet a minute at 144 knots. Uh, could have been a little better, could have been a little worse, but, uh, hey, we made it. We're on the ground. Uh, let's go ahead, do this, this. As 
see what we did here. So here's the flight, folks. The nice little button hook that got us going. Up here, view details, view details, an hour and a half flight, 500 miles, 10,000 kilograms of fuel, 1.5 Gs at 517 feet a minute. So overall, really not bad. Let's see. I know we were way off to the left side um, of the uh, runway, 30 feet to be exact, and uh, 1,800 feet down. So that part could have been better. Uh, but overall, I think went pretty well. So I hope you all enjoyed these two flights. Uh, they have been a blast. Uh, be watching for them up in YouTube. And uh, folks, we're going to call it. Uh, it has been a long day at it. Uh, so there it is one last time. Let's kind of come over. Let you all see it. TWA MD-11. Look at that jetway in the center uh, door. That is awesome. Okay, folks, I hope you have a wonderful night. Tomorrow, well, we got some interesting tricks up our sleeve, so I hope you all enjoy. As I said to, uh, to uh, Azul, we might be flying his airline. We'll find out tomorrow. Hope you all have a great night. Uh, was a pleasure flying these two flights. Uh, look for them on YouTube later tonight. So for now, we'll sign out of here. God bless you all. Have a wonderful evening.